Hello people, Katie Cleaver here again. So I want to do another video on report. So this report is going to be on an ICU patient. Many of you know I, I used to work neurocritical care, right now I'm working in med surge. And I wanted to provide an example of the difference between the amount of information provided. I see you patients, you're typically hopefully only having two at a time, and you have still have 30 minutes for reports. So in med surge, you have four or five maybe, hopefully, hopefully. And you have 30 minutes to get report on four or five patients. Now we move to the ICU, you have 30 minutes to get report on two patients, hopefully. So I wanted to go through an example of that process. This is my report sheet that I'm going to use. Um, and I'll provide a link to where you can get that and 32 other report sheets for free in the description of this video. So this is my example of a neuro um, critical care patient report. This is fictional. I totally made this up. Um, I think it all makes sense. <laughs> so bear with me. All right. The patient's name is James Halpert. And I'm going, let's pretend I'm giving report to the day shift. I'm the night shift nurse giving report to day shift, okay? This is James Halpert. He's a 74-year-old male. He is a patient of neurosurgery. They are the attending. Critical care medicine is also following as well as cardiology. The patient's um, on isolation for MRSA of the nares and has no known drug allergies. Past medical history includes CAD, AFib. He is a Coumadin patient. Um, he has CHF. He had two stents placed for an MI in 2010, diabetes and GERD. So on the first, he had a fall at home, and they called EMS, and he was brought into the emergency department. CT showed that he had an intracerebral hemorrhage with intraventricular extension. An extraventricular drain was placed in the emergency department. His INR was noted to be 3.12. He was given K-Centra and um, vitamin K in the ED and brought up to us. He was noted to be hypertensive. Um, I think he was around the 200s at that point. They put him on a cardian drip. He it, had a central line placed. He was also intubated when he got up to the uh, neurointensive care unit due to his level of consciousness. On the second, this follow-up CT noted that um, the, the bleed was extended slightly um, and his neurostatus declined a little bit. Today is the third and um, we're hoping to get an MRI today, but we'll see um, if his stability allows that. Neurologically, he um, is not on any sedation. He does not open his eyes to command. When you open with manual eye opening, he will fall, he tracks and follows on the left side, but does not cross midline. Um, he does not have a blink uh, re reflex on the right side, but does to the left. His pupils are 3.5 and um, prompt. He does not have a gag reflex, although that may be baseline. He does have a positive cough. Um, he moves all four extremities. The left he will follow commands with, although slowly. He um, will pick up his thumb. He can show two fingers again slowly. On the left he, foot he can wiggle his toes. On the right he needs painful stimuli to elicit a response. With a trapezius pinch he will flex up to my hand. And um, he will pull up, um, he'll do a triple flexion with his uh, right leg. His toes will go up with plantar stroke. I think that's all of my neuro assessment. And at this time, typically I ask to make sure I didn't forget anything. He has an extra ventricular drain. It is um, leveled at 20 at the tragus. The 24-hour output was 25 milliliters. 125 milliliters. He, the drainage was darker red at the beginning of my shift. We're now kind of going to pinkish, lightening up a little bit. Um, there are no CSF studies ordered. Um, so cardiovascularly, he is in controlled AFib on the monitor. He typically runs um, 70s, 80s. 
Um, they want him less than one, his systolic less than 140. He is on cardine at 10, and he is also on an insulin drip at 3 an hour. Those are going into a left subclavian, um, that's triple lumen. The dressing um, will be due to be changed in about four days. Um, he also has a number 18 in the right AC that was started in the ED. We went ahead and left that. It draws blood. It's, it's a great IV. We wanted to leave that in. Um, and I think that's about it as far as that goes. Um, Pulmonary-wise, he is intubated. Uh, he had, he's PRVC, uh, PIPA 5, FIA2 of 40, and then a rate of 16. He's uh, got a number 20, I'm sorry, number 8. ET tube at taped at 23 at the lip. He his uh, secretions are kind of thick and creamy. Uh, his oral care um, has been going fine. There's no issues there. Doesn't have a lot of oral secretions. He is coarse throughout, so he does need good um, uh, VAP prevention. Um, GI wise, he is on enteral feedings. Those are going through a Dobhoff tube in the left nair taped at 72. He has um, diabetes source going at 45 an hour, and that's his goal, and he's been tolerating that well. Um, I've been giving meds down the Dobhoff. He has uh, the standard, um, actually they upped his uh, flushes to 50 Q4, so um, that's what's going set on the pump. His, uh, the, you'll need, probably need a new bag, and you'll probably need to change the tubing around noon today. He has a Foley catheter with adequate output. Um, his last bowel movement was prior to arrival. He does have bowel sounds. They aren't hypoactive, but they're not as active as you'd like to see. Skin-wise, he has um, some bruising, um, probably from the fall to the left side, on the left shoulder, um, left back, um, and then left behind the ear. Um, I should say, backing up to the ED, um, his C-spine was negative. There were no fractures noted. Um, other than that, he has no skin issues. Um, PRN med-wise, um, I have not given him anything uh, for pain or sedation. He does have propofol ordered PRN for tube tolerance, but he has not been noted to be in any distress and, and probably because of his level of consciousness. He does have PRN 650 of Tylenol ordered for a fever greater than 99.2. His Tmax for me was 100.2, so he did get two doses of Tylenol for me. Um, his 24-hour max is less than one gram. I'm sorry, less than two grams. So we're okay as far as that goes, but he does need some um, aggressive uh, temperature management. Like I said, he's on the insulin drip at three an hour. Your next um, blood sugar check will be at eight. He got a bath last night around midnight, and he has SCDs for a VTE pro prophylaxis. Lab-wise, nothing was too out of whack at all. Um, his K was 3.8, so per the potassium replacement protocol, he should get 40 milli equivalents today. His mag was 1.2. He's going to get a mag rider today as well. Um, we did initiate the bowel protocol because he has not had a bowel movement. So he has Senna and Colace that have been added as scheduled medications as well as a 9 a.m. Uh, suppository. Um, his sodium this morning was 133, which was down from 135. His INR was 1.2. His platelets were 310. His H&H &H was 10 and 35, or 35. Um, he has Q2 hour neuros, Q15 minute vitals, and he's a Q2 turn. Things I wanted to clarify with the physician today, he probably could tolerate from increasing his blood pressure um, medications and hoping, hopefully weaning down on the cardine. Um, his wife is at the bedside. She's very nice. Um, his daughter is flying in today, so she should arrive today. I've talked to her on the phone um, once last night, but she probably will need a more thorough um, update. Um, and her mom did say it'll probably be pretty difficult for her to see to come in, and it might be she might be a little emotional when she comes in. So that's just something to kind of be prepared for. Um, so that is my report. At that point, I would ask questions. As you can tell, it's super deep detailed. I, I have to typically follow my sheet pretty closely sometimes, depending upon how much things have changed throughout the shift. 
Um, so, uh, as you can tell, that's that's a lot of information. It's never perfect. So sometimes you miss. So hey, what questions do you have? What did I miss? Um, sometimes there is something. You know, oh wait, I forgot about this. Oh, like one thing I. Um, yeah, so this patient, you know, didn't need restraints, but frequently in the ICU, you've got patients that are restrained, so you would talk about what restraints they have, why they need them, and when the new order is due. So that's a very frequent need for a patient in the ICU. Um, and if, But if you have a neuro patient who is um, significantly um, impaired, they may not, and they're not moving their extremities, they won't need... Uh, uh, restraint. One thing also is important to do is if you have a patient that's completely um, unable to move one side, they don't need bilateral restraints. You can just restrain the one side that they're using. Please don't restrain both sides if that's not necessary. So that's something to consider. So again, here's my, re my report sheet on my fictional patient. I'll put a link to where you can find this, um, this free PDF. Um, on the link to this video and feel free to check out um, there is going to be an accompanying blog post that goes with this um, as well as a blog post that goes with med search nursing and what a med search report looks like and what a uh, um, what kinds of things a med surgeon med surgeon nurse does throughout a shift so thank you guys uh, feel free to check out my blog and additional resources below this video and stay fresh